I, Irene Hall, was born September 9, 1914, a daughter of Charles A. and Esther Fletcher Hall. Dr. Flippin was the doctor who delivered me, and I was born in the north front room downstairs of our home place on the Siloam Road. I know Mama must have wanted a boy because she'd had three girls in a row, but she never let it show. And one thing I hardly remember, but I've been told it, that Bessie taught me to walk and to sing, go tell Aunt Patsy her old gray goose is dead. And she thought I was the cutest. My first real memory is of Lillian, Aunt Ada's daughter, bringing me home from their house and carrying me down the path to the side of the road. Mama was sick and I stayed up there for two weeks. And while I was staying up there, Irma, their daughter, and Bob Bowes were married, and Valley, another daughter, and Maud Martin were married, and all in a double wedding. And that night, as the custom was, they stayed there at Uncle John and Ada's. And the community people belled or serenaded them. They made all the noise and everything they could make outside the windows. And, of course, that awakened me, and I cried. And Uncle John had to take me home. And he never let me forget that and tease me about it as long as he lived. My earliest memories of traveling for the whole family was a surrey with a fringe around the top. And I remember going for a surprise birthday dinner in the community in this. And it, I think it was at Uncle Denson Matthews. And he and my daddy had a sawmill together before my memory very much. Grandma Hall, who was a nating, had a brother, Uncle Sanford, who didn't join and was a bushwhacker. And they met by bushwhacker, they hid out in the bushes to avoid being enlisted into the Confederate Army. Another thing I want to mention are chicken stews. We cured tobacco and tobacco barns with flues that burn wood. There was a certain smell about this that just seemed so good to have chicken stews too. Took a big iron wash pot from iron, uh, Rhode Island, a big iron black wash pot from home and in this you put the chickens and the butter and the water and, and stewed it and it smelled so good I wished I could go to one more chicken stew like this. As I've told you before, we didn't know much difference in the depression at home because we grew our food. Mama made our pretty clothes. But I remember one thing they said was started during the depression was cream gravy. And that was certainly a starchy dish, but it was a good one. I mentioned the first wedding I ever went to was Tom and Emmy Matthews. I think the second one I went to was Coed Hall and Ernest Smith and at Uncle Lack and Aunt Bed Hall's. They had it out in the reception hall and it was a beautiful wedding there. Another big time in our life back when I was small was the commencements at our elementary school. We had real good commencements, and as I told you about the doors to the three rooms, uh, between the rooms folded, and you could um, have quite many people in there, and they put up a homemade stage, and I always had to say a recitation. And we had drills, and, and um, it was just good commencement exercises. The last year I was there in the seventh grade, I spoke the recitation in the contest, and I spoke the good little girl, or the bad little girl, whichever it was, and I won out on that. When I was in high school the next year, of course, I had to speak in the recitation contest the first year in high school. My dad and mother believed in this. They called it elocution. And uh, that year I spoke ties or shall not shall be tied tonight, and I won out, mainly because Lucy Hoosier and John Shore both spoke and they forgot theirs, and I didn't. Uh, referring to Grandma Hall, in her latter days, she had what they called consumption back then. And they, she stayed there, in which was the parlor of uh, uh, our home, and that was before my day, of course. But they looked after her so well, and uh, I don't think it was consumption at all because nobody ever took it. It was something like bronchitis, I'm sure. But I remember telling that she uh, 
uh, I didn't pop his arm singing, Lord, I'm coming home. I've heard Travis say he always built the fires in there and kept the wood in there for her. I've heard my daddy tell about going to a frolic over at Uncle Solomon Hoosier's. He and his best buddy, Uncle Sam Poindexter, who grew up down on the river from us, and they got there. There wasn't any boat to go across the river, so they took off their uh, shoes and stockings and waded across, and it was at Christmas time. They got across the dust of fire and warmed and put their shoes and stockings back on and went on to the frolic. The parties were called frolics. Granddaddy Hall's youngest brother was Uncle Sam. They called him, they called him Uncle Sam. Travis has nicknamed me Uncle Sam because I stay on the go a lot and Uncle Sam did too. He would come to Friendship Church and his favorite songs that he would call for was Charge to Keep I Have and I'm Bound for the Promised Land. He didn't always like butter so much and he ate a lot of butter at home because we always had plenty of butter, cows and all. But he went over to a neighbor's house for a corn shucking and took out butter just like he did at home. And one of the girls said, my land, what a chunk of butter. And going to, back to my childhood in the wintertime, after the evening meal, which we called supper, we sat around the fireplace in my daddy's room. That was the gathering place. We had a fireplace in every room except the kitchen and the home comfort range there, so it took a lot of wood we were using them all. So we didn't use them all as a roof, but we had plenty of wood anyway from uh, the river farm, and my dad always had that cut following the first of January in the winter months when the south was down. And he got the first wood saw in the community, and we sawed it there, and then the stove would be split up. We had good stove wood for that home comfort range. The only thing I had to carry it in, and I thought it took a lot. But sitting around the fireplace, we talked of news and current events, of course, in the community, and sometimes ghost stories were told, and I liked that very much. I've told about the rabbit gums and, and the uh, Jip went to the rabbit gums, and we used some of the rabbits to eat, and some she sold for 15 cents each. But Mom, Mama always fixed the head for me, the rabbit head, and when she had chicken, fried chicken, she always fixed the chicken head for me, so I had rabbit brains and chicken brains. No wonder. I'm just scatterbrained. Where I grew up was called Hall Town because that's where Mama and her two sisters lived, who all married Halls. Ain't Ada, Mama's oldest sister, married Uncle Jones Hall, who lived next door. Ain't Beth, Mama's second oldest sister, married Uncle Lycott, who lived down in the valley from us. And Mama married Charles A. Hall, my daddy. And we visited at our cousins a lot. We were all good cooks. It was a good place and a good way to grow up. And I had mentioned some of the um, way we talked in Yagan County, and I remember my daddy saying fetch for Breen. And we had other ways of saying things. Uh, we'd say he or she has spunk, which meant uh, they had courage or nerve. I feel tolerable for feeling very well. She's plum pretty, but very pretty. And a pig in a poke was for somebody that you hadn't seen and uh, you uh, just took them at the word of a friend. And kettle calling the pot, uh, pot black was another saying. When someone said something about somebody else and it was true about themselves. Sunday dinner was a tradition and we always had company. Mama never knew how many she was cooking for. We had Christmas dinner, as I've told you before, we usually had oysters that were given to my daddy by the fertilized companies. And at church we had the Christmas tree, a beautiful ceiling top tree decorated and gifts under it. And the names were called out, every one of them. And then the girls who were uh, grown up and thought they had on a real pretty Christmas dress delivered these presents to each person after their name was called. That was a custom. We also had reunions when I was a child. The Benville Hall reunion to East Bend at Uncle Doc Benville's home place. That was my daddy's uncle. He had married Grandpa Hall's sister, Aunt, Aunt Betty. And these were very enjoyable 
um, my dad's first cousin, Attorney John Bindo, was one that paid for this afternoon of, uh, or we took lunch and ate the picnic first. Everybody took. But then that evening he had a chicken stew that he did himself for all the townspeople and everybody at the reunion. He had been postmaster at Winston for several years, plus being an attorney, and he was never married. So he uh, had the money to do this. And they read the Bendo history and the Hall history of this, and that's when I learned a lot of the history of my family. After Bess went to live at the home place, we had reunions up there in the fall, and uh, they got so big uh, for us, we couldn't have them any longer when they built a fellowship hall at Friendship, we started having it there. And we call it the Hall Fletcher Reunion because three of the Fletcher girls married Hall, so we have it all in together. Home Methodist Church, and uh, I think the person had died from the flu, and this lady was there and had a string around her neck with asafidity down it to keep the flu germs away, and I'm glad I didn't have to wear one of those. And the song for World War I was, I remember, was a t uh, It's a Long Way to Tipperary. It's a long, long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary to the sweetest girl I know. The wheat thrashing and corn chuckings were big time in the community, too. Uh, uh, before my day, my dad owned a thrash machine and thrash wheat for eight seasons for people, and uh, of course they paid him with um, a part of the wheat, and uh, that was the way they did pay him in uh, the uh, commodity. Then corn shuckings were in the fall too, and uh, you had people come in and you had a meal for that. My mother usually had the lunch meal for the thrashers and a supper meal for the corn shucking. We had home remedies that we used and uh, onion juice was one to cook the onions there on the fireplace and drink that onion juice. And if you had a cold, put kerosene on a red flannel uh, cloth and put that on your chest and turpentine too. But the purgative was castor oil and cold coffee. And to this day, I didn't like cold coffee and I wouldn't drink it when it was very much in style to drink because of having taken castor oil as a child. And I never would give much urine castor oil. One memory of World War I after it was over was on 4th of July after Travis had gotten home. They had a big parade at Yaginville for all the boys who were in the service. And we went, of course, and Travis paraded in the parade. And Joe got a United States flag that day. I, I wasn't able to get one, but anyhow, I enjoyed her little flag. I saw the jail that day and saw the people in it, and that was a lasting impression on me because I had never seen a jail before, and it wasn't a very good-looking place at all. I mentioned that Mr. Owen Reese was my teacher at Piney Ridge, Mr. Plez Matthews my teacher in first grade at Friendship, Miss Della Williams my teacher in second grade, and Miss Yulee Brandon was my teacher in third grade, and she boarded at Aunt Ada Hall's next door. She dated my uh, brother Travis, and I was the mail carrier. I would carry his notes up there asking her for a date. And one Sunday, he asked me to take one. I told him I wasn't going to take it unless he let me go along that afternoon. And he let me go. And I remember we went to Boonville to see her sister, Jo Brandon, who was in high school up there and was staying at Bonnie Corns. We came by Mr. S uh, Sampson Dexter's and saw Lillian and, and uh, Clyde Smith was there dating her, who was a friend of Travis's. In the uh, fourth grade, Miss Jessie Horn was my teacher, and she was still born at Dane Aders. In the fifth grade, Wilsey Taylor was my teacher. Sixth grade, Mr. Collins was my teacher, who had married Anna Pendry, a neighbor girl right across the way, and lived in our community. In the seventh grade, Wilsey Taylor was my teacher. Then when I started high school in the fall of 1928, we had, um, Mr. Moody, George Moody for English, Mr. Abbey Singletary for Civics, uh, Mr. E.L. Ponder for Science, and Ms. Braswell, Ms. H. Braswell, her husband was in the principal, was my math teacher. We had uh, arithmetic for half a year and then algebra for the life half the year. 
in the ninth grade, I still had Mr. Moody in English. I had Miss Harrell, Mr. A.E. Harrell's daughter, who was the banker there, in math, algebra. Mr. John Nicholson, history. And Mr. Ponder for Latin. Then in the 10th grade, I had um, Mr. John Nicholson, history. Mr. Ponder, second year Latin. Mr. Lineker, English and literature. And Miss Thelma King. In the 11th grade, Mr. Lineker, still for English and French. Mr. Ivy Singletary came back from my teacher for physics. And Miss Harrell was our uh, teacher, and uh, Miss King. In the 10th grade, the juniors gave the seniors a banquet at school. And then in the 11th grade, the juniors gave us a banquet there at school. In the fall of 1932, I entered Appalachian State Teachers College at Boone. I had known about this school for some time because that's where Evan went when he went to school. And uh, one time, the president of the college, Dr. B.B. Darty, came home with him on his way to Raleigh to get the appropriations from the General Assembly for his school, and he spent the night at home. The next morning he got up and was talking to my daddy there in the room, and of course I was right there listening, and he was wanting to pay my daddy for spending the night. Of course my dad would not have any money for that, and he turned and gave me a dollar bill, and that's the first folding money I ever had. I went to Sunday school at Friendship in um, preaching service. I remember one time when the revival started, and it was large in attendance. We always had the second Sunday in July and called it the protracted meeting. And a lot of visitors came from far and near, and it was such a crowd there, I thought, well, oh. and if Pearl Angel and and I were sitting together, we'd slip out. Nobody'd ever miss us. We were tired of sitting anyway. So we slipped out, and oh, we saw a lot of people outside, visitors we knew, and, all. and uh, I didn't think Mama knew it. When I got home, I found out she did know it, and I never did slip out of church anymore. They played the organ. We had it one of the pump organs, and it was played by Shape, the person who used Shape notes for playing it. And they had a song leader, and, and, think, and one time during the summertime, we had a singing school, and Mr. Maston from Jonesville taught that same singing school. He and his son, both these matching uh, teachers for singing schools, and it went on for the whole week. Also, when I was small, but our pastor was Reverend R.P. Cohen, and he was pastor of Shoals Baptist Church, Friendship Baptist Church, our church, Union Grove Baptist Church toward Boonville, and Charity Baptist Church almost to Boonville. And ours was on second Sunday and Saturday. <clears throat> and the, all the churches went together and gave him a Ford touring car, brand new. And it was given at our church because it was more in the center of all four churches. And they had dinner on the ground, and then they were standing there on the front steps of the church, and this car drove up, and Reverend Corm's grandson gave the stints and was driving the car. And I was standing right there on the step, too, to see it all well done. And they presented him the car right there, and he didn't know anything about it. Later, when we went one time visiting Aunt Sue Fleming and Uncle Oscar, who lived near Reverend Corn, my dad went down to see him. And he wasn't at home, but he started back up the road from his house, and he met him coming in that car. And he told it on him that he was singing, Get Along Home, Cindy, Get Along Home, Get Along Home, Cindy, I'm going no more. But, of course, that was just a vocal, uh, joke on him. I mentioned the song for World War I, It's a Long Way to Tipperary, and it went like this. It's a long way to Tipperary, it's a long way to go, it's a long way to Tipperary, and the sweetest girl I know. 
goodbye Piccadilly, farewell, it's too square It's a long way to Tipperary, but my heart's right there Another memory is of lye soap, the soap that was used for washing, and it was made at the wash furnace where the hot water was heated for the uh, wash. And Mama had an ash hopper. It was shaped like a cone made out of wood, and you put ashes in this, and you poured water over it, and that water that finally ran through that and was caught in the container at the bottom was lye and that was used with uh, fats saved from fat meat to make this soap and it was used it was very strong in the washing later on we used hot powder soap but that that lye soap was the first used and Aunt Bed Hall was very good at making it and sometimes she came and helped make the lye soap at home Every room in the house except the kitchen had a fireplace and these were used in cold weather to keep the house warm. Even in the dining room we had fire when it was real, real cold. And the fire was banked at night and covered with ashes and the red coats were there in the morning to start the fire. We, uh, some beds had feather beds and they were real warm in the winter time too and the feathers for these uh, Feather beds were from chickens that were killed, hens that were killed, or used just for eating. We had a home comfort range in the kitchen, which was a good cook stove. And uh, it had a hot water tank on the side, and it had, over the hot water tank, it had this pretty blue and white enamel. And this is where Mama put her good hot rolls when she cooked them in the morning so they'd be warm even for supper, keeping them on the hot water tank. It had a warm place to put your feet down under the oven. And when you built a fire in it, when the oven was hot enough to bake biscuits, you could hear it thump. It was the expansion of the metal, I guess, is what caused it to do that. But it sure made cook good food. And she had black pots that she would cook the beans in, and she'd take the uh, round cap off and put the bean pot down next to the fire had black frying pans for frying the uh, meat, chicken, and whatever, and they were good to have, too. We had a store about a mile up the road. Mr. K. E. Matthews had the store, and we'd take butter and eggs there, and when we'd go for Mom to the store, sometimes she'd let us get a bottle of pop, and most often I got peach pop. Quiltings were held around in the homes, too, and I remember Mama having the quilting frames upstairs in the north bedroom. And then after, in 1942, when my daddy built a, had a new wash house built, she had the quilting frames down there, and Aunt Ada would come down and, and help her quilt in the wash house. Sometime wood choppings were held, and uh, then the wood was brought and sawed, and my dad had the first wood saw uh, in the community, and it was made out of an old car. Aunt Rachel Davis, who lived nearby, was, uh, and that was uh, Burke Davis, the writer's grandmother, was a midwife, and she would go around to some of the homes in the community when babies were born, but not at our house because uh, we had Dr. Flippin for us. When there was a death, Mama and, and Miss Flynn and other ladies would go help and That was before the day of uh, funeral homes, and there was nobody to come. And uh, the, the dear ladies would wash the person and dress them and lay them out, they called it. There used to be typhoid epidemics, but that was before my time because the typhoid vaccinations had started in my time. We took our lunch to school always in uh, dinner buckets. Now, they were usually round metal buckets. And you had water in a bucket at Piney Ridge School for everybody to drink out of the same dipper. But at 
when we consolidated and had the friendship school, my daddy got these wooden kegs with a spigot and the water was put in them and we had the folding aluminum drinking cups or you made your paper cup and I always made a paper cup. Some of the others had a drinking cup at my house but not me. And my daddy had a well built dug out in the schoolyard. Before that we had to bring the water from someplace else but then they had a well dug there and uh, we had water right there on the school ground. The blueback speller was before my day. I remember the child world reader and that was a good one that I had in the primary grades. But from the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, I had the Sears and Martin Redback Reader, which was had the best literature in it you've ever seen. My mother played the guitar, and I remember her playing and singing Darling Nellie Gray. My daddy could play what he called the fiddle. And he and Uncle Dean Hoosier and some old men used to make music at the uh, school closings, exhibitions they call it. And one time they were playing out at Piney Ridge School and Uncle Doc Martin's mule broke loose and went home. And he said that was the first time he knew his mule was a Primitive Baptist because the Primitive Baptist didn't like the string music. The way to cross the river down at the hill from our home place to go to Siloam was by a ferry and Uncle Lack and Uncle Joan Hall owned this ferry and they had a ferryman there and you had to call for him if he's on the other side of the river and he had to bring the ferry across to take you over. I never did drive in that many times in a car because I was afraid of it and then the, and they built a bridge across that river in 1938 I think it was and that was the one that stayed there until it fell down years later and Mr. and Ms. Hugh Atkinson were killed, who lived in Siloam. Down the river a few miles was another ferry, and my daddy and Uncle Dean Hoosier owned this one. It was called Hoosier's Ferry, and the other one was called Hall's Ferry. And this one, you could go to shows for this way. And also, there, the railroad track, which was just across the river on the Surrey side, Yagin never did have a railroad in it, uh, this was Hoosier's side, and then this is where my daddy had his fertilized uh, car, freight car stopped and sold the fertilizer. And the, of course, the uh, ferry was very convenient for that, too. And uh, the two horses that I've mentioned, Frank and Charlie, were such good horses, and they would haul this fertilizer that he was going to take home. One time when I was there, we'd taken his lunch to him, and we'd get to stay that afternoon, and he was taking. 16 sacks of fertilizer home and I'm not sure how much the fertilizer weighed in a bag but I'm sure it was a whole lot and that was a lot for them to pull but he said that they had pulled 20 bags of fertilizer and that was a record for any horses to pull. Our home place was right out just not many yards this side of Grandpa Hall's home place, and that was a lovely old house. It had been plastered, and it had the chair rail, and it should have been kept. But after we left up there, the, uh, a windstorm came and blew the roof off, and we never did have it put back on. But I have some of the wood in the basement that came out of that, in the cabinets I have in the basement here. The many foods that we had uh, were all good, but hominy was one that Ain't Eater Hall made, and you used wood ashes some way with it to, to make the lye, and you put it in a wash pot and boil it. Mama made dried fruit, and that was very, very good, and she made moon pies from that. And we enjoyed it. using it. The apples were cut and dried in the summertime. Cornmeal mush was another old-fashioned food that was made with cornmeal and salt and water. light was the lamps, kerosene lamps, and it was either red or clear kerosene, and Bessie usually washed the lamp globes and filled the lamps up on Saturday. I never did get to do that. A lantern also was used when you had to go out at night with oil in it. 
that the pillows was used on the bed and, and also uh, down pillows. And as I said, feather and straw uh, tick be, uh, used on the beds too. Later, Mama got all mattresses for our beds and uh, we didn't use those anymore. The beautiful quilts were used too that were handmade. And Mama would crochet her dish rags in the wintertime when she wanted something to do and they were very pretty. She made us a tonic for the spring out of wild tree, cherry tree bark, it was bitters we called it. And I guess it did help that you started off in the spring. Grandma Hall had a spinning wheel and a loom and a flax wheel. I still have the spinning wheel. Mama made all of our uh, clothes for us girls and she was a good seamstress. We had as pretty dresses as anybody and she always had us a pretty dress for our Christmas tree up at the church and sometimes at school we had the Christmas program there too and then at commencement time we always had a pretty dress and I felt like I was dressed as pretty as anybody. She could look at a dress and make one uh, like it. Some parts of our clothes that were made from feed sacks I remember the part that we wore in the summertime at the top was called bodies and then the homemade drawers were at the bottoms. And uh, uh, hand towels to dry hands on were made from feed sacks too, but they were pretty. And later on, pajamas were made from the flared feed sacks that they got to put in the feet in. And uh, they, they were pretty too. But I remember the union suits being worn as a child, and you had to put your legs of these down into your stockings, and that was kind of hard to do to make them look pretty and smooth. I never did have to wear the black rib stockings like some of the children had to wear. Mom always got pretty sporty stockings for me and I was, I was proud of them. We had a milk well in the backyard and this was um, to keep the milk and vegetables cool in the summertime and it was a, a, like a cabinet crate that you, uh, had two shelves that you set this on and let it down to the bottom of the well. And it wasn't all the way to the water, but it was real deep. And sometimes in the spring, that would need cleaning out. And one spring, I remember my dad let me down on that crate and I took a, a little broom and a, something to sweep up the trash in and put it on the crate and wound it out. And then he wound me out. And I wasn't one bit afraid because my daddy was holding the windows. Sometimes something needed to be dyed, and Mama would dye it in the wash pot with hot water. And you bought your dye at the store, or you could make your own dyes from some uh, different things. We had uh, brooms in the spring made out of um, limbs off of trees, small limbs off of trees. They were stick brooms, and you had to sweep the yard with these. Later on, we used rakes. In the spring, cleaning consisted of washing the windows and all the window curtains and the sun in the feather beds and putting new straw into uh, straw ticks and in the wash you put bluing in your final wrench water to help make them and you hung the clothes out in the sun and that made them very white and we had two long clotheslines down at the uh, edge of the backyard and had wash tubs with washboards in them to uh, wash your clothes and get them clean and as I said using the lye soap too. We had a trunnel bed put under Mama's bed where you could pull out and some of the children slept in that and then later on they moved upstairs. I was the last one to move upstairs as um, Jip and Pansy left to go in nurses training then I moved on upstairs to sleep with Joe. Some people had what they called chinches and then you had to use scalding water and uh, uh, kill those out. There was a fly bush you used to scare the flies away and it was made out of paper and put on a long stick and it was uh, uh, paper strips. We had the first screens in the community and uh, at the windows and the doors, so that helped more than anything else. I mentioned the uh, milk well, but we had a brick well house, which was so nice too. It had an earth floor, and um, 
later my daddy had shells put around and that's where mama kept her canned poop and it sure did look well pretty and in the winter time nothing would freeze in there because of the earth floor so it's a good place to keep things in the winter time too we didn't have homemade shoes but some people did mr meyer Marin they said and harry Marin's husband had been a shoemaker but my dad did have a last for mending shoes but most of the time we took our shoes to the shoe shop at East Bend to have them in. Some people selected the well sites at their homes by a peach tree limb that would turn where the water vein was, but I can't say how well that worked. In the fall, turnips were holed away, sweet potatoes were holed away in the earth. A cabbage grew in colder weather. And of course, in the summertime, we had onions, cucumbers, green beans, and tomatoes, and all this growing. First, uh, the churning was done long ago in an old fashioned uh, ceramic churn with a dasher. But my first churning was done with a daisy churn, and I still have it down in the basement. And I learned to count by churn, t counting my turns when I was helping churn. Mama was so good at making light bread, and first she made it with ruffles, and then later on she used yeast, and she made potato yeast. But her last making, she used Fleshman's yeast that she bought at the store. But the, uh, this was certainly good bread. We had molasses, and we grew the cane in the river bottom and took it to a molasses mill. I remember we were taking it out toward East Bend at Mr. Belvey Walls first, and then Mr. Dallas Spencer's, and then Mr. Mel Flynn had a molasses mill, and that's where we took it last year's. And you grew the corn in the river, uh, cane in the river bottom, you stripped the fodder off of it, and cut it down, and cut the seeds off the top, and took this. And they had a mule going around and around, turning the way you ground the cane to get the juice out. And then you put this juice in a big vat on top of a furnace where a fire was burning. And Miss Ellen Flynn skimmed that, and she could tell when it, exactly when it uh, got the right thickness to stop it and take it up. And you paid them by paying them so much of the molasses that you had made. One way of uh, having uh, animals to, to eat and to sell was rabbit gums. Those were made out of wood for sides, and then it had a trigger, and you put a bait inside the gum, and when the rabbit ran in, that trigger put the door down. Jip used was one that went to the rabbit gums before breakfast, and when she caught one, and it didn't look uh, like that was the age of the rabbit mama wanted to eat, took it to the store, they had to take the intervals out first, but you left the fur on it, and Mr. Kearney Mathis paid her 15 cents for the rabbit. Those were taken on to Winston and, and sold, but I pity people eating those rabbits when they were old. Tobacco was the cash crop, as well as the lumber that my dad sold and the cross ties to the railroad people. We swapped in priming tobacco, the neighbors did, and uh, that was a good way to get your tobacco taken care of and put in the tobacco barns and you cured it with fire. In the summertime, I went barefoot, brought in the stove wood. That was my job to keep the stove wood in the kitchen for the home comfort range, which took a lot of wood. We never did have any mules. My daddy loved horses and he was a country horse doctor. And when somebody had a sick horse and didn't want to send for Dr. Grantford at Winston, they would send for my daddy and he'd go see about it. I've heard that some of uh, Grandma's people had oxen, but that I never did see anybody driving oxen in our community. That was before my day. A new ground was ground that had been cleared of the trees, and then the stumps were gotten up and it started tending. That was new ground. Our well had a windlass on it, and that was to help it wind easier. I think Mr. Dallas Spencer invented that. And then the milk well, as I told you about. The big man in the county was the sheriff, the high sheriff, they called him. And Uncle Will Fletcher, Mama's oldest brother, was high sheriff for two seasons. They were elected by the people. 
we had no radio or TV, and they'd had a telephone before my time, but in my time we didn't have a telephone. We got a, a radio after I started teaching school when we got the electricity to Siloam by Duke Power, and they had to be paid to do that, and it then brought us a pretty field cool cabinet model radio. We got newspapers weekly, the Union Republican, but later on, much later on, we had a daily paper. Some games that were played at parties we went to was Spin the Bottle, King William, um, Life and Go Foot, the picture taking uh, game, and fishing, post office, and all these. Those were games that were played at parties. I meant to say Uncle Will Fletcher was sheriff for two terms instead of two seasons. We attended Friendship Baptist Church, of course, and were members there. But we also went to Holly Spring Primitive Baptist Church because Grandmother and Granddaddy Fletcher were Primitive Baptists, and Uncle Lack and Aunt Bet Hall and Uncle Jones and Aunt Ada all were also Primitive Baptists. M uh, my daddy's other halls were Missionary Baptists, they were called back then, and that was what Friendship Church was going to Holly Springs, we went to the foot washings on, in the summertime, and also if they had an associational meeting there, which they did sometimes, we went to that too, and we attended uh, church services there. But at the foot washings, we had church service that morning with preaching, dinner on the ground, which I thought about all morning, and then in the afternoon they had the foot washing where the men washed the other men's feet, and the ladies washed the other ladies' feet. I can remember that very well. Words I heard used in Yakin County as a child. Stout was used for strong. Air for are. Shet for shut. Sitch for... get shut of is to get rid of, and hit for it, ill for bad-tempered, peart for healthy, and chaw for chew, touchy for sensitive, and tuck for took. Other words I heard in Yakin County as a child, ain't for isn't, and aren't, haint for a ghost, hope for helped, again for against, feared for afraid, contrary for contentious, deaf for deaf, fur for far, heard for heard, hope for bag, and goobish for peanuts. Peart as a cricket was speaking very, very well. Some superstitions in Yagging County was to put an axe on the bed to cut the pain of anyone who was sleeping in that bed who had serious pain. And another superstition, a grown person whose father had died before they were born, never saw their father, could blow in the mouth of a baby and cure it of its rash or thrush or whatever the sickness was called.
other sayings we had, one was, cross my heart and hope to die. If you wanted somebody to believe something you were saying, then if you said something at the same time as one of your friends, you'd crook your finger and pull it and make a wish. And if you were walking in one one side of a tree or post and the other one on the other, you said bread and butter. I remember diphtheria being around in the schools, and uh, I know of two little girls who died with diphtheria. We had a foot tub for washing our feet when we were going barefooted, and my one desire was to get to bed some night without washing my feet, but I never was able to do it, because Mama never let me get by. I remember at Christmas time sitting out boxes for Santa Claus to bring our goodies in. And one time I put our Snow King baking powder can out and Santa Claus would come during the night and fill them up and the oranges was on the head usually at Christmas time and smelling an orange made me think of Christmas. This tree was upstairs in the hall and Pansy was the one that looked after getting that and putting it up. And it was real pretty up there in the, next to the front door. Later we had them in the parlor down. And this is one verse that went with one. Whistling girls and crowing hens will never come to any good end. And this was a superstition about warts. I had a seed wart on my heel. Couldn't wear my shoes very well in the summertime to go to church, but I went there for the rest of the time. But we'd heard this lady in the community, Jenny Moss, could remove warts. So I got Pansy and Joe to go with me out there one afternoon. And went up to her and told her about my wart. And I heard she could remove them. And she acted like she was angry and says, Who said I could remove warts? But the wart went away. And before when her time came to wear shoes, my work was all done. I remember sliding down the banisters. That was fun, upstairs, downstairs. I also fell down the steps one time when I was wearing high heels from some of the older girls. A good time, as I told you, was at the Christmas tree at the church. And we sometimes had one at school also. And I remember the pretty dresses I wore to these Christmas trees, and I always had to say a recitation, too. I had a red flannel dress Mama made me that was real pretty for Christmas. And then she, one Christmas she had me a navy blue velvet one with dark red satin sleeves. I liked that very much. We could play sliding downhill, even when there was no snow on the ground, by using the needles in the cow pasture on the steep hill, and we had a sled, uh, plank with a piece of wood down at one end to put our feet against, and we'd go down the hill very, very fast. One time, my mama got after me for telling uh, something I'd heard the grown people telling about a girl in the community, a neighbor girl who was staying over at another neighbor's house. And uh, I went over there and I told her I knew something. And she kept asking me what it was. I said, I know something. Her name begins with E. Well, her name was Emma. So she got it out of me, and she went and told this lady that, about it. Well, she came to Mama about it. Mama called me right out on the carpet before the lady and made me apologize. So that helped me never to repeat things I'd heard. One of the first vending machines I ever saw was at Mr. Grandmaster's store. On the outside of the door, it was a rectangle shape, and you could get chewing gum from it by putting one penny in it, even on Sundays. The long way up and down on the wood, beside the door. You put a penny in it, and you got a stick of chewing gum. And you could get that on Sunday even. I had my brown with chewing tobacco. I uh, really started chewing one time and that's when I quit. 
I was down at the river farm with my daddy and I was going to carry him water from the spring there. I had a good spring. And there was a willow tree out there where I could stay in the shade and where he left his overall jacket while he was plowing corn. The bottoms lasted over a mile and the rows of the corn were real, real long. And I saw some chewing tobacco in his overall jacket pocket and it, I smelled of it and it smelled so good. I thought, oh, I've got to have a chew of this. And I took a chew and chewed it. Well, it wasn't long till I was as sick as I could be. And uh, he came to cool in the shade a while and he says, I mean, you look like you don't feel good. I'll go get my own water. So I didn't get to carry any water that day. And I never did chew any more tobacco. We had a county fair at East Bend that went to every fall. It was in October. And this was a good get-together for Mom and Daddy to see everybody. And my Daddy liked to talk so much. He had a good time talking to all of his friends. And you took things for, uh, to win prizes. And the judges would judge on the Monday, I think it was. And then uh, the rest of the week, people came to the fair. And we usually went on Friday. And Evan had given me a dollar at Christmas, and I had bought me this bedspread already designed. And I embroidered it. And I took that and put it on the next fall at the fair, and I won the prize. I still got that bedspread, too. In the wintertime, when it snowed, we made snow cream. You'd take the snow from where it was real deep and clean and put milk and sugar and vanilla in it. It was real good, and the snow was clean then. I wouldn't do it now with this polluted air. We had a lot of good cows besides the two pretty big horses that we had, and uh, all the ones I've ever remember were real gentle except one. And this one was a good Jersey cow my daddy had bought from Mr. Quill Shore. And this cow gave a lot of good rich milk and made a lot of butter, but didn't like children or women. And uh, one time I was there at the cow lot, and she started after me, and I ran and jumped the fence without any trouble because I was so scared. She got Bess down one day and rolled her around and around on the ground because Bess finally rolled out of her way. That was a cow that didn't like the women folks. In our cow pasture, we had fun in the summertime sliding. We could slide as well as you could slide on the snow in the wintertime. We had these planks with a piece at the bottom you could put your foot against, and we'd slide down the pine needles on the hill in the cow pasture, and that was a lot of fun. I've mentioned before I was having a pretty new dress for the Christmas tree program, at church, and sometimes we had one at school too, and then at commencement time in the spring when school ended. I remember having a red flannel dress that Mama made me for the Christmas tree at uh, church, and I set a recitation with that dress on. And then one year I had a navy blue velvet with dark red satin sleeves, and both of them, were, I remember, were being real, real pretty dresses. I also played at home sliding down the banister from upstairs. That was a good game. But I also fell down the steps one time wearing some of the high heel, high heel shoes of some of the older ones. I've mentioned before in my memories about Papa thrashing wheat fate season owning the thrash machine. And at that time, they were, uh, the thrash machines were pulled by horses he saw me for 30 years and I've heard him tell that he thrashed wheat for eight seasons, saw me for 30 years, never had an accident. The first time I ever saw golf being played was at Roaring Gap. Evan came up one weekend and took us all to Roaring Gap. It was, had to be in the 20s, one summer in the middle 20s. And we went in the Papa's touring, Ford touring car. And when we got up there at uh, Greystone Inn, we saw them playing golf. And that's the first time I ever saw golf being played.
I mentioned the store the, uh, there in the community, Mr. Matthews' store. The way he kept his drinks cold, he had a milk well under the store. And it had a hole in the floor, it let him down, and it had a crate. And of course, we had a milk well at home that I've told you about. He also kept the butter there in that that he bought from the people and sold to Mr. Charlie Matthews, who took it on to Winston. And I've also mentioned about Jip taking rabbits up there for 15 cents, that she called in her rabbit guns. And he had a gasoline tank out in the uh, store yard there where he sold gas, and it was one that you could pump and see the gas up in it, and you could tell the gallons as it came down because it was marked on there where you could see it. That was a good loafing place for the farmers when they didn't have anything to do, and he had a wood stove and they'd sit around in, that, uh, in there and talk around that wood stove and keep warm. In the wintertime, he'd have salt fish, and I remember us having salt fish from there. Mama would clean them the night before in the kitchen and bone them, and we'd have salt fish to eat the next day. When I mentioned my dad played the fiddle, I forgot to tell some of the songs that he played, besides old Joe Clark, which he played. He played Ida Red, that was one of his favorites, and Arkansas Traveler. Some Christmas customs where people would dress up and go to each other's houses. And I remember um, Paul Bowes, who lived next door, and Ada's daughter, dressing up and coming down one Christmas. And I knew who she was, but yet I was afraid of her. And a saying was, before the other person could say it to you, Christmas gift. And Christmas guns was a custom. You would hear these guns shooting over in Surrey County, far away, and that was another custom of shooting guns at Christmas, and I don't understand the connection there, but that was a custom. We always had oysters at Christmas time, too. The fertilizer company would give my daddy a gallon of fresh oysters, and that was a custom for us to have oysters on Christmas Day. One Christmas Day, Aunt Sue and Uncle Oscar Fleming came, that's Mama's sister, Aunt Sue, and their children to have Christmas Day dinner with us. And uh, they hadn't been used to having oysters, and one of the children at the table kept chewing the oyster, take it out, look at it, and put it back in and chew it some more. And Jip got so tickled that my dad had her leave the table because we weren't allowed to laugh at the table and cut up. I remember the Victrola that's in my living room when it was bought, and it was the first one in our community, and my dad ordered it from Jim Brown catalog, and it was shipped to Siloam to the freight depot, train depot. And when it came, he was notified, and he went to get it in the wagon, and I was so happy. I was out in the yard turning somersaults and couldn't wait for him to get home with it. And he had made the selection of the records himself, or they did the company one. Anyhow, we had, when the rollers called up yonder, I love to tell the story, I need the ever hour. And uh, on the beach at Waikiki was a Hawaiian record. And there's a Negro record, a great big record, Negro preaching. I guess you could have that now. But it was, uh, and people all in the community came in to hear it. and, and um, it was just a real rarity, and I still have that in my living room now. We grew a lot of watermelons down the river bottom, my daddy did, and, and cantaloupes, or mushmelons we called them. And uh, I remember when Mary and Kate Fletcher from Boomer, Uncle Will Fletcher's daughters, came down and visited us in the summertime. We'd walk down there to the river bottom, get them hot, and try to carry them home and fertilized sacks, which was kind of hard to do, and we got up there in the shade in the woods where we took a shortcut, and we stopped and ate some of them so we wouldn't have to carry them all the way home. They were hot, but we still ate them when they were hot. And my dad had so many one summer, he decided to take a wagon load to East Bend to sell them. And he started out one Saturday afternoon when he wasn't working on the farm, and 
when he got to East Bend, he only had one because he'd met so many friends along the way, he'd given them all away except one. He had ice cream parties on Sunday afternoon. Company come in out there onto that big oak tree close to where the garage is now, but the oak tree's gone. And uh, Uncle John A. Nader had one, and if we wanted to have two freezer fulls, we borrowed theirs. And I remember one time I took it back and told Aunt Ada, much obliged for the ice cream freezer. We'd keep the ice in the well house, as I've told you, it had a earth ground wrapped up and until time to make the ice cream. We wore slat sunbonnets Mama made, and uh, the way you made these, out of cloth, and so a place to put the slats cut out of cardboard, and they were the right length, and uh, then when you wanted to wash it, you took the slats out and numbered them so you'd know how to put them back. And I have Mama's last one now in the front bedroom here. One way to pull your baby teeth out was to tie a string to the doorknob and slam the door closed. But I was eating a turnip one time down there near the old spring place and pulled a tooth in the, with the turnip. For toothbrushes, you go out and get a twig from a um, black gum tree and chew the end till it was soft and that'd be your toothbrush. When the sheet wore thin in the middle, I remember Mama cut them in half and sew it together and, and it was strong in the middle because the two outsides that had not been worn were now in the middle. You speed sacks for everyday towels and uh, the good Turkish towels were saved for Sunday. Gourds were used for dippers at springs. I've mentioned the corn growing in the river bottoms that were so long. We also grew some corn up uh, near the barn at home. And in the fall, when it was uh, getting dry, we'd cut the top of the corn off and leave the ear of corn on the stalk. Then you would pull the fodder off the stalk too. And all that was bound into shocks to take to feed cattle and the horses. And as I've mentioned before, with the uh, wheat and rye, you'd make those shops in the middle of the field and look kind of like Indian teepees. Pumpkins were usually planted in the corn too, and we used those to make good pumpkin pies, and also they'd fed them to the cows for more milk. I had a little bantam hen that Aunt Sue Fleming gave me that I love so much, and it was such a darling, pretty little dark red hen, and I named it Grace after her oldest daughter. And that little hen would mind me and sit on the back porch as long as I told it to, and it was just precious, and it became missing, and I couldn't find it, and when I was down below the wash house one day, I found its feathers where a dog had killed it. Well, I started crying, and I mean I cried, and my daddy was building a tobacco barn over across there and had a carpenter working for him and he heard me and he called and wanted to know what was wrong with me but I really hated about my little phantom hen I mentioned the two big Belgian horses that we had Frank and Charlie that were so pretty Travis had taught Frank to buy it. He played with him so much and picked at him. Well, he had that horse so that he would nab at people. Well, they stood there in the stables opposite each other in the barn, and I was coming out the barn one day and came too close to old Frank, and he nabbed me with his big lips. That almost scared me to death, and I went and jumped in the stable with old Charlie. In going to school, uh, in the third grade, Miss Eulalia Brandon taught us the first psalm, and she taught us a 
the 23rd Psalm too and then she taught us a little verse to go along with 1 Timothy and and 2 Thessalonians 5.22 and it went like this I'll tell you exactly what to do 1 Timothy and 2 Thessalonians 5.22 tells you exactly what to do when I was down at the river farm I liked to watch him ride the hand car the men who worked on the railroad across the river and I always wanted to see the with the sled with the horses so people could have a way to walk and not have to walk through the deep snow. Neighbors were good to helping each other do things like that. The last doll I got was such a pretty doll and that was the last time Santa Claus came to see me at Christmas. Now I really knew better then that who Santa Claus was, but I wasn't about to let it be known. And I had my picture made with that doll, and I have it in my curio table now. And later I found out that Evan really brought the doll to me because he was working in Winston-Salem at the time, and he was the one that picked out the doll for me. I've told about the milk well, and we had cows, and they would be hitched out in the summertime to be the lawnmowers in the yard. Now we were, had the first lawnmower in the community and when I grew up I mowed the yard with that lawnmower and it was a push mower for sure. And my dad didn't believe in wearing shorts so I didn't wear shorts to mow the front yard but when I got to the backyard I'd pull off the skirt with a two-piece outfit and mow in shorts in the backyard. The old cow though helped out picking and grazing and then she'd stop in the afternoon and chew her cud. Mama would milk at morning and milk in the evening and she had strained this milk with a strainer with a clean white cloth over it into milk buckets and they would be let down in the milk well and then they would the cream would be skimmed off to make the butter and that was what is put into the churn to make the butter mama also made cottage cheese Milk that was not used was allowed to clabber, and sometimes in the wintertime she'd even put it on the home comfort range while it was cooling off to make it to clabber better. She would put this in a sack and hang it outside the north kitchen door, and then she would make cottage cheese that was soft in a mound, and she'd also make the harder kind of cottage cheese you could slice, and it was truly good. A correction to the little verse that Miss Brandis taught us in the third grade about First Timothy and Second Thessalonians. It went like this. Say my chum, have you seen First Timothy 2.15 Second Thessalonians 5.22 tells you exactly what to do. One of our main uh, chicken dinners on Sunday was fried chicken or chicken pie and the chicken pie was made by Mama without any vegetables in it. That wasn't the way that you made chicken pie back then, with the vegetables in it at all. We uh, enjoyed the hams and the meat from the hogs that were killed, too. Mama had her chickens in chicken coops, and they had front doors and that you fastened. There was no floor in them, of course. And then she set the hens on the eggs and the pullets and roosters. And the next year the pullets would lay and eat the roosters. I told about the long corn rows in the river bottoms. And uh, this was done by the, planted by the corn planter. Then it was cultivated with the uh, cultivators by the horses, the horses pulling them. And sometimes in the garden, this corn for our roasting ears was planted by hand and there's a little verse that went like this one for the blackbird one for the crow one that will grow one that will leave just two to grow
I've told you that Mama was good at dressmaking, and she cut her patterns from newspaper and tied them with a piece of cloth like the dress so she'd know which pattern is which. We made scarecrows to put in the corn to scare the hawks away and the birds that would eat the uh, garden vegetables when they were planted. And those scarecrows were real funny looking. The chickens that were eating were chopped off at the chop block and um, I never did like to see that. And I only picked one chicken in my life and got it ready for the uh, for cutting up to cook. And I didn't do very well at that. But smelling those feathers after they were scalded just wasn't for me. We said we had cows and they would have calves every so often and that would renew the milk supply and would have plenty of milk. And uh, we'd sell the calves most of the time. Sometimes we kept them in ruin to cows. But Mr. Charlie Matthews got um, the calves, bought the calves. And one time he bought one and he got more for it than he had thought he would, that he paid my daddy and he came back and paid him more for it. My daddy thought that was an honest man. Before my time, uh, Grandma Hall made her own candles before we had oil. There were oil lamps to uh, see by. And uh, I have her candle molds in my den now. They got the tallow from, I guess, from beef cattle when they were killed. And uh, had it hot and put it into these with a wick in them. I tried doing this at Louisville School one time. And every time... Uh, we tried it. We didn't do very well at it. We were dipping them then with, uh, in the, like they did down in Old Salem, and every time we dipped them in the hot tallow, all we had on the wicks would come off. We uh, had drying apples in the summertime, and maybe I've mentioned this, but you put them out on uh, these boards in the sun, and if it came up a thundercloud, you had to go get them in, but the dried apples were so good to have in the winter time to make Mama made moon pies with them. Grandpa Fletcher had a drying house before you got down to his house. It was like a little tobacco barn with a furnace, and you put them in there and dried them, and you didn't have to go take them in when they came a thundercloud. I forgot some games a while ago when I was telling that, and one was thimble, and you went around, and everybody had their hands together in their lap, and you'd put your hands down through theirs, and you left this thimble in somebody's hands, but you didn't let it be known whose hands it was. And then you started asking each one who had the thimble, and they had to guess someone. And if that person they guessed didn't have the thimble, they would make that person do some stunt of some kind. And if they did have the thimble, they had to get up and be the thimble person to give it out next time. We also had fun blowing soap bubbles. We used the wooden spools Mama had She'd take the thread off and sew in at her sewing machine, and we would use these with soap on them to blow bubbles, and had a lot of fun doing that. Before my time, there was a spring house down in the woods to the north uh, west corner of the house, and it was a pretty place down there with a lot of ferns, and I've gotten ferns around the tree in my patio from that place down there. But by the time I came along, they had the well up at the house. When they had this spring down there and used it, they had a spring box that they put the t uh, milk and butter and everything in to keep it cool. But if it came up a thundercloud and a big rain, they had to go get it out, which was a lot of trouble. At Grandma Fletcher's, they had a spring house. And this was the same system, except it was inside the house, and it was safer that way, I guess. And um, you still had to watch, though, when thunderclouds came in rains, but not to be upset. A lot of watermelons were grown, and I don't know whether I've told this one or not, but uh, my daddy grew so many watermelons down the river bottom, and uh, we certainly enjoyed watermelon out at the shelf at the well house, and that was a good place to eat and get it all over your face. One time we had company during the week for dinner, which was lunch now, and uh, it was Kel Thomas and his wife. He was a salesman, and it was my daddy's first cousin's son, cousin Sarah Thomason's son. And uh, 
his wife was very polite and all, and she asked me where the closet was. Well, she really meant the bathroom, but not thinking myself, I took her to the closet in the hall and showed her that one. I've mentioned the last doll that Santa Claus brought me, but I also have in my curio table this beautiful silver mesh bag that Travis gave me one Christmas to take my love gift to Sunday school in, and I treasure that to this day. I told some about the wash day with the big wash furnace that would burn wood on and it had two big pots for heating water for the washing and also boil clothes in these. One time to boil them before you finish, then you scalded them in the other pot and you had washed them on the washboard before you put them in that first pot. And lye soap was used in this washing too and I told you how that was made with an ash hopper and you put them in the rinse water twice and then you put them through a bluing water last and hung them out on the clothes lines. We had two long lines at the lower side of the yard and the sh colored clothes were hung in the shade, the white clothes in the sun because that helped to whiten them too. And you made starch of your own to starch the clothes and the pillowcases and things like that were starched. The starch made it home. And you had to sprinkle those starch clothes the night before you were going to iron them the next day. The irons were heated either on the home comfort range or at the fireplace. In the wintertime, sometimes at the fireplace, but it got smutty there. It was really better to heat them on the home comfort range. Every piece was ironed, too, even to the washcloths.